please briefly summarize your industry education and professional background. Great, thanks, Todd. Well, I had come to JLL with over 20 years of experience in providing financial advisory services to clients in the energy and infrastructure sectors, both domestically and globally. I started my career after getting my master's degree here in Washington, DC, with a boutique project finance advisory firm focused on the energy and oil and gas sectors internationally. While with that firm, I landed a contract uh, to provide independent financial due diligence to the TIFI office. TIFI stands for the Transportation Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act, which is housed at the US Department of Transportation and the Build America Bureau. Um, from that day on, TIFI was my client. And from there, my interest in the US infrastructure sector was born. Um, I also just have a, a bit of a familial background. My father was an elected politician um, in the Seattle King County area for my entire life. Um, and so just really enjoy the nexus between the political and the, the um, owner and the public sector and the private sector and how we can come together to move all this infrastructure forward. Perhaps you can tell me a little bit more about how JLL and its clean energy and infrastructure advisory team fit into the overall infrastructure industry. And what specifically does this advisory team do? Well, we're trying to bridge the gap between the financing and funding and the project realization, right? Because there's no lack of, of money that's out there for all this infrastructure that needs to be built and rebuilt. Um, and it's it's really a matter of making sure that, that everyone is has a good understanding and awareness of what's out there and what's needed to bring these projects to fruition. Um, in essence, we help clients in the public sector monetize their assets, both what we sort of commonly say horizontally and vertically. So that's looking across transportation, uh, light rail, um, public transportation, um, highways, bridges, and then also vertical infrastructure when you're thinking about buildings, schools, courthouses, uh, water infrastructure, anything and everything that, that sort of helps this country move and go about its business. Our advisory team at JLL helps clients with balancing the risk and structuring of their projects. In the current environment, we're really helping them take advantage of both the IJA and the IRA funding. So here we are in Washington and we use lots of acronyms, but those are the two big infrastructure bills that passed um, this year and, and late last year. We are also helping a lot of our clients think through how to leverage this funding to entice the private sector to think about investing alongside them, the owners, the, the public sector. JLL's Clean Energy and Infrastructure team acts as a trusted advisor for our clients from project scoping, procurement documentation, technical due diligence at the beginning of a project's development through to what we call financial close and project implementation, resulting ultimately, hopefully, in a more efficient and effective long-term project performance. And that includes, Todd, the sustainability component as well. Uh, which of course is, you know, the Biden-Harris administration is laser focused on making sure that we uh, continue to, to contribute to um, um, climate sustainability and, and making sure all of this built infrastructure that we're, we're implementing does not um, contribute to, to increase greenhouse gases and the detriment of the planet. Okay, great. So from what you're saying and from some of the research I've done, you're a bit of the, uh, the financial export in, in the group. Can you explain a little bit about how you're trying to expand JLL's public-private partnership or P3 process or businesses? And can you provide some background on what the P3 process is, what are its pros and cons, and how do you plan on bringing more P3 projects to your firm? So P3's public-private partnerships are really, it's a, a structuring and a, a development tool for infrastructure. Um, honestly, Todd, we could spend the rest of the afternoon talking about P3s and what they are and are not and how they are helpful and, and maybe not the right solution um, for any, any particular project. But there's a range of types of transactions and financial structures and, and what JLL does and has done for a very long time actually is we work with our clients to tailor a structure, a project structure, a financial structure that meets our clients' needs and objectives, um, whether it's risk sharing, getting technological innovation from the private sector, or really working towards leveraging or retaining attractive sources of capital and funding. Um, the benefits of the P3 model are, are quite numerous. Uh, there, there also are some pretty um, inherent challenges. Really at the basis of a P3, you know, in, in my sort of simple definition, you're, you're taking, you're allocating to the risk 
the allocating the risk to the party best able to bear that risk within a project development. But additionally, what you're doing is it forces the owner together with their private sector partner to think through the long life cycle planning of a project. So what we all know is that in this country, we're great at building things, right? We're, we've been great at funding really big, massive capital infrastructure projects. But what we have not been good at is thinking about the long-term life cycle costs, the long-term operations and maintenance, and what can we do to make sure that, you know, as those projects have wear and tear um, and need to be continually refurbished or enhanced or, or replaced, where's that funding gonna come from? What P3s are good at doing is helping to put a contractual structure in place that forces that thinking, the long-term thinking. Um, in that, in essence, there are some inherent challenges because as we all know, politicians like to have quick wins and quick uh, opportunities to demonstrate success. And so it is a bit of a disconnect to think about working together at the public sector, which does involve our, our legislators and how we can make, make these projects come together over the long term. JLL's goal really is to leverage our existing areas of expertise um, in energy project development and financing, our debt, really deep knowledge of federal credit programs that provide low cost patient capital at little or no cost to the taxpayer and putting together some really innovative financial structures to bring additional value to our clients across the sort of uh, value chain and, and across all, all sectors. Okay, great. So you were talking about how, how laser focused um, some of this, this stuff is on being a sustainable infrastructure and not just same infrastructure that's being built. But there's there's not as much I, I think sometimes is realization or or you know honesty that, that sustainable infrastructure it costs more and has more um, expenses involved with it. Do you think that that is a, a particular challenge to the, the tag of sustainable infrastructure and the funding problems, or is it still a, just a general problem of of funding any infrastructure and that's uh, you know similar problems as in the past? I would think that it's. It's, it's a similar problem. I don't think adding in the component, we don't think adding in the component of sustainability really adds any additional cost, if you will, or expense. Um, because again, it's thinking about the long-term value of what you're delivering. And we have to start doing things more efficiently and effectively and, and better, right? Um, to do things better so that it, it is not detrimental or, or hurtful, harmful, to our existing environment. Um, sustainability really should not be thought of as an added cost, but really a new um, business as usual or, or new normal for the way that we're doing things. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's, it's many things sort of drive how this moves forward, Todd, right? I, I mean, some of it is just the market forces themselves. Some of it is, regulation and, and um, carrots, if you will, that, that government can put in place to entice um, individual actors or you know, bigger, broader actors like school systems or city government to move in a particular direction towards a more sustainable development of infrastructure. But I, I think at the end of the day, what's really changed over the last probably three to five years is, is the acceptance and acknowledgement that that things have changed and we need to do better by, by our built environment. Um, and so it's, it's really not a question of looking at it as, a, as, a, as an additional cost or, or a disconnect, but that it, it's the way we need to do business going forward. And at the end of the day, and even, even Todd, even before both of these large infrastructure bills got passed in the last year and a half, um, there was an enormous amount of what we call dry powder of capital out there looking for good, well-structured deals to get involved in, in the infrastructure space. Um, there's been much said, you know, thinking back to when, back during the Obama administration, when we passed some other infrastructure legislation and the whole tagline of shovel ready and how that seemed to not work out very well. Um, and so now it's, it's thinking more instead about um, shovel worthy projects, right? Projects that have gone through some of the permitting and environmental reviews that are required that have, have, have you know, done a first sniff test at 
what sort of is the financial plan? How much is this going to cost? What are some of the other pieces in terms of uh, stakeholders that need to be on board with, with developing and implementing a piece of infrastructure? Um, and so I, I don't think that the sustainable bent or the sustainable sustainability label should be a hindrance or, a, or should, should cause anyone to worry. Right, it it really needs to be the new normal in the way we're we're developing and and building all of our infrastructure. Okay, great. Sam. So, if you're talking directly to our audience of, of of civil and structural engineers, what tips or advice might you give them, and how they can better incorporate some of these um, sustainable ideas into their designs, so it's not increasing in costs, and then so that they can, and also, what can they do to help get um, funding and buy-in from from management? What can they do? I guess, how can they improve their role in this this whole process as an engineer? First of all, you know, don't be afraid to to ask questions um, and to to reach out to to experts, and uh, presumably, I could say to reach out to JLL. Um, on getting a, a better understanding of what this really means and what this is all about, um, whether it's you know doing better by the by some of the real estate, or if it's thinking about how you're going to implement all the infrastructure around electric vehicles, um, or you know some of the new technology that's being developed to make existing um, treatment of water or production of electricity more sustainable and green, right? I mean, there's there's plenty of, of folks out there with, with expertise um, who would be happy to share um, just to get folks sort of uh, more familiarized and comfortable with what all of this means. Um, secondly, I, I, I would, you know, it behooves everyone to think about, of course, the financial feasibility of this. Um, Again, if it, on the engineering side, if one is going about designing and, and developing a project and you're really, you know, some of it is, is new green space in terms of how much things are going to cost. I mean, at the end of the day, I think the market understands that there's going to be some um, trial and error, if you will, around getting, getting that cost estimating correct uh, and more accurate as we move forward. So it's really about thinking, thinking about partnering again, kind of going back to the P3 model, right? And, and, and putting teams together that can work collaboratively across a, a, a bunch of different sort of areas of expertise, right? So that you can develop a solution that, that puts, the, puts the best plan forward and hopefully is a success. If, is there maybe one specific, like very specific piece of advice that if you're going to tell somebody to, how they can make a difference, you're like, hey, you should start by doing this. Well, I mean, I definitely think that it's it's about educating and, and raising awareness about what all this means. Um, I think, Todd, there's definitely been enough um, time that has gone by that there's plenty of individual resources and, ex and individuals with expertise. And so, you know, if you're a smaller or medium-sized firm and you don't yet have someone on staff that has some experience in designing and implementing these projects that, you know, you, you get one of those people on your team, right? I mean, that's the easiest, fastest way. Um, and again, to, to reach out to some trusted folks outside of your industry um, or attend conferences. I mean, there's, there's so much information out there about all of this. Um, some of it, also coming directly out of the out of the White House and the administration and the and the different um, departments, right? Department of Transportation, Energy, Interior, all of it. This is this is an area that the administration is laser focused on. So there is no lack of information. In fact, maybe that's the advice, right? There's so much information that maybe the easiest thing to do is to find a trusted resource and and just start to ask some questions and become knowledgeable. We are really excited about um, all of this work going forward and the enormous opportunity that's out there. I mean, the, the, the amount of work, for lack of a better word, that needs to get done to get us faster forward towards these sustainability um, and climate change goals is oftentimes overwhelming. But I think that, again, the American in, um, ability to, to solve these problems we have proven time and time again. And so it's just a really exciting time to be a part of 
all of this infrastructure work, um, especially for those of us that call ourselves infrastructure nerds who just love, love doing this work. So I really appreciate Todd, your time. And, and um, I hope that, that your audiences really can get some out, something out of this.